Uncovering a cosmos of European ceiling culture, digitizing the basal cast collection. Before I'm going to start my project, I just want to introduce you briefly uh, with my project partners on their behalf, I'm just talking today. So there are the Archiepiscopal Archives at Cologne, represented by Joachim Oepen, who is among us this afternoon. There's my dear colleague, Hiram Kümper, from the University of Mannheim, uh, a scholar very much interested in working in the digital humanities. And there's finally me. The three of us have come across a collection housed in the Archiepiscopal Archives in Cologne, which is the so-called Beisel Collection. It's named after its collector, scholar in the 19th century, born 1841 at Aachen, died 1915 in the Jesuit house of Falkenburg in the Netherlands. He took, and this is the particularity of this collection, impressions of about 30,000 seals from original matrices throughout his lifetime. He actually started taking impressions himself or uh, by professionals, even the 1860s when he was a student at the gymnasium. He continued this all over his life and interestingly enough, through his Jesuit networks. As he himself was exiled from um, Germany in the 1870s, he lived, himself, he lived in Britain and France, and he took even residence in the Netherlands from 1900 onwards. So he was, avant la lettre, a true European, despite his very conservative attitudes in many respects. He finally gathered more than 30,000 impressions, as I've already said, and arranged them at a yet unknown time in his life in 300 boxes with up to 150 impressions attached. After his death, the Jesuits tried to sell this collection and this didn't work out very well. There's a very interesting link even to the US where uh, delegates took some of the boxes in order to sell them to American collectors, which didn't work out. So the collection got in oblivion and was just as rediscovered or recovered in the 1970s in a garage in the Belgian-German border area. Finally, it was sold to the archives in 1984 on the initiative of the well-known German signalographer and archivist, Tony Diederich, who got hold of it and who could secure it for the public. Just a quick look inside, because this is important for what we are going to do and what we want to achieve with this outstanding collection. As I've said, the collection is covered in 300 wooden boxes, with a measurement of about 40 to 25 centimeters, which look a little bit like granny, uh, grandpa's cigar boxes. They all contain a central tableau, so you can, as you see, turn them around, so you have four trays per box with up to 150 impressions in a box. Problems and potentials of the collection and the chances for solving them by digitizing it. The problem and the major problem of this collection is that it's completely undocumented. Though Basel has left us a huge range of academic publications and a rich inheritance of records and scholarly notes, almost nothing remains about his lifelong seal collection. About the only reference we have are handwritten notes by himself, such like here 
for the impression of a rather well-known English seal, the official seal of the wool staple of Westminster, which Beisel mentioned to be from London, but not more. So if you pick up the London collection catalogs, you quickly find that it's nowadays stored in the British Museum and is already catalogued by Tenoji in 1951. The only other source we have on this collection is a handwritten card catalog by Tony Diederich, which covers per card just one box. So you get only a very rough definition of the content. So box 130 is named or labeled as English seals, and you get the number of seals attached to a single tray within the box. This collection, however, is indeed a cosmos of visual knowledge on medieval Europe. And what is very interesting is Beisel's approach, which goes far beyond the sigillographic interest of his contemporaries, and therefore is rather different to other cast collections in the 19th and 20th centuries. He did not only collect a single specimen of each seal and arrange it, like in many cases, due to the social status of the seal holder, but he took many impressions of one and the same seal. And I want to show you this by a rather outstanding seal, the second seal of the chapter of the Holy Apostles in Cologne. This one I found years ago in seal box 282, which is actually dedicated to seals with motifs of saints, many of them, but not exclusively, to the Virgin Mary. But this is by far not the only impression in this collection. So if you go further, you find, for instance, the same seal in a rather different impression in seal box 219, or you find even two impressions in box 303. As you can easily see, they are of rather different color and quality. So the impressions prove that they were taken at very different moments. Only the one I've shown you earlier from box 282 shows the final good quality standard of about half of Beisel's collection. But the other half, as you can see here, the three other impressions prove that they are the result of a lifelong project. Beisel's idea therefore, was not merely to create a sigillographic companion, but rather to his attitude as a Jesuit scholar to create a cosmos of Christian iconography. This is actually the starting point for our project. This is a challenge which actually exceeds the problems we have about cataloging sigillographic con uh, collections in databases and visualize them for a wider or a narrow scholarly public. The appearance of a particular seal in the context of different boxes dedicated to different purposes. Once it's the display of seals with certain iconographies, the other time it's a box dedicated to seals of a certain origin, in this case, Cologne makes it very important to have a smart digital storage for this rich evidence. And therefore, we are very glad to have found a very helpful partner in the Greven Stiftung at Cologne, who has created the Greven Archiv Digital, so a digital archive mostly for 
the cultural heritage of the Rhineland. This is an open access digital archive based on an APS 2.0 system, which allows to bring together the data of various different photographic collections. And to give you an impression how we could integrate the Beisel collection, I have chosen the Bildarchiv of the Kölnische Rundschau, a local newspaper from Cologne, with more than 60,000 photographs so far catalogued. This single collection of about 60,000 photos is much more than double of the amount of seals we would have to catalog in our project. We could adopt the rather flexible structure of the Greven Archiv Digital, actually to a virtual rearrangement of the boxes and the trays in their original settings. So you could actually set up the original setting in a sealed box on a single tray within or on the surface of this virtual archives. You could go further ahead. And with this, I'm coming to my final point. The structure of this virtual archive helps us actually to identify single seal impressions because we have a coherence of object numbers to a signature system. So we could take actually every single specimen of the collection from every tray. And this is the greatest asset. We could actually link, for instance, the different impressions we have from one and the same seal. So I've shown you here the seal from the Holy Apostles chapter in Cologne, actually to bring it together. And this, to bring it to the conclusion, is our attempt in order not just to catalog and to publish this collection, but to start researching the intellectual structure of this collection. Thank you very much.